What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the Samsung Captivate AT&T's Galaxy S variant. So before we start talking about the features and the specs and how the whole package of the phone comes together, let's talk about call quality. No matter how good a phone is, if the call quality sinks, it's not going to be useful. So I'm happy to report that much like most phones I've tested recently, call quality on the Captivate has been very, very, very good. I had no popping, no white noise on my end. When I was on the caller's other end, I had no white noise or popping there either. Uh, very minimal drop calls. I use this as my daily driver for uh, almost two weeks, and on a two-week total, had only two dropped calls. Uh, so the thing has been very, very, very solid, and call quality has been great. Speaker volume is very loud. So if you need to use this as a phone, and phone quality is your top concern, no need to worry, the Captivate is going to serve you very well. So let's go ahead and talk about sort of how all the features come together and sort of a quick refresh. Uh, the Captivate is using something called a Super AMOLED screen. Sort of the short definition of what that means is on traditional capacitor touchscreens, uh, the touch layer of glass is actually right on top of the glass. On a Super AMOLED device, the touch sensitive mechanism is actually built into the glass, uh, which is going to mean that you're gonna get brighter colors you're going to get better visibility in sunlight, and you're going to get what's most considered to be a more vibrant display. Uh, and that is quite true here with the Captivate. It's got a resolution of 480 by 800. It's not a killer resolution, uh, but on the screen, that resolution does look fantastic. Uh, I did a comparison with the Super AMOLED versus the iPhone 4's Retina display, and it really came up to a, a tie, whichever one you're going to prefer. I'll put links to those down below. Uh, something to note, uh, there is a bit of a hue, almost a bluish hue on the screen of the Captivate. And that's going to give you a bit more visibility in direct sunlight, but it's something to keep in mind. Uh, the screen doesn't look crystal clear, and the whites don't necessarily look white, they look a little bit more gray. Uh, however, if you can deal with that, uh, you'll be able to use your phone again in direct sunlight and have a very, very beautiful, vibrant display. Pictures look gorgeous and video indeed. Uh, looks gorgeous as well. So I'll go ahead and jump back here. Generally, I've not been the biggest fan of capacitive buttons, and the Captivate does feature four capacitive buttons across the bottom, although Samsung has done a very good job of making them work. On devices like the Nexus One, for example, the capacitive buttons drove me crazy, uh, but here they work quite well, so no need to worry. Uh, from a software standpoint, Samsung has skinned Android 2.1 with their new TouchWiz interface which is much less intrusive than previous TouchWiz interfaces that we've seen. Uh, you've got some Samsung dedicated uh, widgets. You've got sort of that four icons across the bottom dock, which makes things very easy. Uh, there are a decent amount of Samsung widgets as well, which do make things uh, quite nice. You've got a calendar, buddies now, days, dual clock, uh, feeds and updates, and Yahoo Finance. Uh, Samsung didn't go too far with skinning Android. I don't think Android needed someone to go too far skinning it. Uh, Android on its own is a very robust, uh, nice looking on-brand system. The Samsung just sort of added additional capabilities there. Uh, certainly kudos to them for that. So it's going back to the screen, it is a four inch screen, of course capacitive. Uh, battery life, it's a 1500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, this is one section where I wasn't overly thrilled with the Captivate. Uh, they advertise talk time of about 5.8 hours of 3G time and 340 hours of standby time. I will tell you that using this as my daily phone, so I don't know, maybe two or three hours of talk time, a heavy internet usage and sort of constant email checking, uh, the phone was down to almost dead from being turned on at about 7 a.m. It was dead almost around 10. So you are going to have to manage your battery life uh, with a device like the Captivate. Uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, it's very thin. The slate form factor is something I'm a huge fan of. It really just feels good in the hands. And the 4-inch screen size uh, may actually be the perfect sort of compromise between the mammoth 4.3-inch screen on the Evo 4G and the Droid X, and maybe the smaller 3.5-inch screen found on the iPhone 4. 4 inches feels right without making a huge uh, additional bulge in your pocket when you're walking around, without feeling like you're always going to be worried about breaking it or getting weird stares by holding a... Uh, mammoth phone up to your head. So I think 4 inches probably is going to be the perfect standpoint. Uh, the camera on the back is 5 megapixels and it does take pretty good uh, pictures. I do wish there was an LED flash. Most phones now have at least one LED flash. Uh, some even have two. Uh, this does not. It can record video though uh, at 720p. So that I believe is going to be uh, 1280 by 720. And the video recording quality was actually very very good. Uh, one of the concerns I have about the Captivate is the build quality and how it's going to hold up over time. 
Uh, this back part is metal, and this is plastic, and take the back off, this part actually slides out. I have a concern that this part's going to come loose. Uh, I've had some issues with Samsung build quality in the past, so I'm a little bit uh, dubious. However, I haven't had any reason for concern on the Captivate. It's more just based on the Samsung build quality from previous devices. Something to keep in mind. And again, there's a little speaker grill. So overall, I've really been very happy with the with the phone and how it works, how it functions. It's just been a, a fantastic device. I've reviewed a ton of Android phones recently, uh, as you guys are well aware, and this one is probably one of the best. And I can definitely say that the Hummingbird processor found in here, which shares almost exactly the same architecture as Apple's A4, make the Captivate an absolute screamer. This phone is blistering fast and hangs down the fastest phone I have ever tested. Uh, faster than the iPhone 4, faster than any Snapdragon, phone I've tested. This thing is fast. If speed is what you need, the Captivate or Galaxy S device is definitely going to be the way to go. This thing handles everything I threw at it. I didn't have to go through and close applications. I could leave everything open and just work. It's got the RAM, it's got the ROM, and it certainly has a processor to sort of back that up. Uh, so TouchWiz is a bit processor intensive, but it hasn't slowed anything down. Uh, this is one of those phones you really have to go sort of see to realize how quick and fast it is. So if I have to rank this on a scale from 1 to 5, I give it a very, very, very solid uh, buy ranking and a 4.75 out of 5 stars only for build quality concerns and the lack of an LED flash and perhaps a higher megapixel camera would have been nice. Uh, this is about as close to a perfect Android phone uh, as I think you're going to find. So if you're sort of up in the air and wondering what phone you should get and you're looking towards Android, uh, you're going to be hard pressed to find something better in a thin, in a thin form factor uh, like the Captivate. I really highly recommend it. And uh, this may be a phone that I like to use sort of in place of my iPhone as my daily driver. It's, it's fantastic, it works well. You get access to all the Android Marketplace. And overall, it's just been a really pleasant experience. So if you guys enjoyed this review of the Samsung Captivate, I'll put links down below to my other Captivate videos in case you want some additional coverage and more information. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, John for Lakers, and check out technobuffalo.com for all your tech news. I am John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video.